So in this clip, I want to finish off the series in regards to the whole issue of trusts. And this should take less than 10 minutes. So in the first clip, what I did is I covered the, the general territory of how a trust works. What it means is that you are giving something away. And so if somebody is suing you, you've decided that you're giving it away to something. It's something somewhere that you want it to go to. You might have a, a child that you really, really love and that you really, really care about. And so you say, I'm going to set up a, a, a trust account and $50,000 is going to this particular child. And then if somebody sues you, well, I've got nothing in here because you've given it away. And then I was up to the thing about pure trust organization. So I just want to go through a few things in regards to what it is and what it isn't. So the first myth is that it totally protects you. It does and it doesn't. Suppose for instance, you do something really silly. One day you, you, get, you get drunk, you do a few things that you shouldn't do and someone says, I'm going to sue you. Now, how it would work is they're suing you, but you don't have much money because everything is in the Pure Trust organization. So the Pure Trust organization is paying you a salary. That means you don't have that much money. So they're suing you for personal things. But let's say though, that instead of a mining company, let's say it's a construction company. And what is happening is you are, the Pure Trust organization has all this money, but an accident happens. And with this accident, there's a bit of legend, there's a bit of, of carelessness, negligence. Yes, that's the word negligence. Okay. So if there's negligence, if it's related to the business where you're in a building business, and somebody has, the person who is operating the business has done something very negligent, it might make sense for the Pure Trust organization to pay up because it's related. Somebody runs it, somebody owns it, and it, it works the same as in a, a company. If if you're running a company and the company does something really, really rotten and somebody sues the company, the company needs to pay up. And I'm pretty sure it would work the same in regards to a pure trust organization. So what that means is if all your money is in a pure trust organization, nobody can sue you personally for what you've got because the money is in that pure trust organization. But if it's a business related, thing that has happened then yes they can sue it but still that that gives you more protection than not putting it in a, in a pure trust organization the other myth is that some people say well it means that you don't need to pay any tax it means that you need to pay less tax because here's how it works suppose you're in England and suppose the first 20,000 that you earn you don't have to pay any tax what happens is the pure trust organization doesn't pay any tax, but then what you receive, you pay tax on. Now, remember, hold on. In this scenario, the first 20,000, no tax. So you receive 20,000. If you're able to live on that, you don't pay any tax. What happens is you keep on earning money. You only take out what you need when it comes to your retirement, you still continue to take money out and you pay zero tax. So that's the way some people use it. Now that's very different to every dollar you earn, you got to pay tax. So let's, let's say that you're earning 50,000 pounds. If you don't have a pure trust organizations, that full 50,000 pounds, you get taxed on the whole lot of it. Whereas if the money goes in a pure trust organization, the full 50,000 doesn't get taxed only what you take out does get taxed and with the money that's left in there you can again save it up for retirement so there's another myth i want to go through in regards to trusts and if you're living in a country like the united states there's a thing called 
community property or equitable distribution. And the thing that they have in common is it means that when it comes to your assets being split 50-50, what happens is you have to, the accumulation of your assets gets divided, not the whole amount. So suppose you have a, you start out with 100,000, the other person start out with 100,000, that's 200,000 dollars and you finish with half a million. How it worked is you had 100,000, you had 100,000, the first 100, the first 200,000 goes to the two of you, and then after that, for every dollar you have, it gets split. So what this means is the reason the whole myth is going of people putting their money in a trust, and they'll set up a trust to themselves which doesn't bring any protection, but what's actually happening is when they put that money in a trust, they're letting the court know, I had this amount of money in my trust. I had this amount of money and the other person's doing the same thing. So if there's 100,000 in your trust and there's 100,000 in the other person's trust, that's $200,000 that the court doesn't touch. But that's because the rule is that what you started out with doesn't get divided. And that's because of things like prenuptial agreements. I'm going to see how much time I've got. Okay, I've, I've still got I've still got enough time to finish this off. Okay, with prenuptial agreements, because of that, that's why they have adjusted the rules. So before I go to prenuptial agreements, I want to explain something else to you. I think I've got enough time for this. But if you take a look, there's, this is an English Law Dictionary. Okay, so if you look under the term financial provision order, you're going to see that how it works in America is very, very similar to the way it works in England. And England was connected to the European Union. So it talks about... It talks about the fact that the court can make an adjustment to the amount each person has to pay. And it says that it's according to Section 25 of the Matrimonial Causes Act of 1973. And it takes a look at a number of things such as the final financial resources and needs of each of the parties. It takes a look at the contributions that each of the parties has made. So if you take a look at, at that full definition, I because of copyright law, I'm not going to give you that. But if you take a look at the at the full definition, you will actually see that it works very, very similar to the American system, where it's not a clean 50-50, you get 50, you get 50. They take a look at a number of of things and it seems very very similar to the American system there's a book called a judge's guide to divorce where it explains that and I'm pretty sure that the reason why there are all these rules is because of the prenuptial agreements that have been made it it means that there's what's actually effectively happened is that they understand why people are doing prenuptial agreements so what they're doing is they've changed the rules and they've said, okay, the first amount of money that you had before the marriage, that's safe. And that basically makes the whole point of prenuptial agreements either useless or less of less value. Okay, so I think I will stop there.